we're off to Kilkenny next to meet tour guide Nevin Cody for the Shenanigans walking tour. A unique blend of history, stories and interesting fun facts about the medieval city of Kilkenny. Coming up now on SPF TV. Hello, Cade Mielefalta or 100,000 welcomes. My name is Nevin Cody and welcome to my home of Kilkenny. This is the beautiful city of Kilkenny, the medieval capital of Ireland, located just 80 miles or 130 kilometers from Dublin in an area known as Ireland's ancient east. Kilkenny has a rich history with many incredible historic buildings, including castles, abbeys, medieval city walls, Tudor houses, cathedrals, and a 9th century round tower. I was born and bred here, and now I'm a local tour guide and storyteller and a passionate lover. I'm sorry, rewind that. Passionate and a lover of history. Whew, could have been a lot of trouble there. Oh, and I'm also a magician. And I love to combine all my skills, passions and interests and skills together to have a blended tour of the city where we see amazing sights, we have some fun, a little bit of magic, some stories and history, and some shenanigans along the way. So it won't be long if we all play our cards right, where we can come back and visit again. So come with me and let me show you around. Well, we've had Celtic settlements in the area for thousands of years. In fact, a bronze fish trap from 2500 BC was discovered just beneath John's Bridge in the city. From around the first century BC, ring forts were built in the area now known as Kilkenny. The earliest permanent settlement dates around to the 5th century, constructed by St. Ciaran, who is called Ireland's first Irish-born saint. And the story of Kilkenny starts here because of this man, St. Canis. It wasn't until settlers of St. Canis came here around the 6th century and built a settlement on a high rise that the area known as Kilkenny was formed. Kilkenig the name of our city in Irish. Kill is the Irish for church and Cianig for Canis. And it was only when we were anglicised we became known as Kilkenny. Not Kilkenny like in South Park, Kilkenny as in the Church of Canis. From 1120 onwards, the seat of religious power in an area now known as Osri had moved to Kilkenny. And it was the Bishop O'Delaney's wish that a cathedral be built on the site of the old monastic settlement. The cathedral and round tower we see today are from two different periods. The cathedral from the 13th century and the 9th century round tower. Understanding the importance of the Normans, Bishop O'Delaney encouraged them to fund the building of a place of worship. It would also serve as a symbol of the importance of Kilkenny. Built between 1202 and 1285, it is the second longest cathedral in Ireland, with much of its original style still preserved. The floor is paved with four different colour marbles representing the four provinces of Ireland. And sadly, Bishop O'Delaney died before the cathedral was completed. The oldest structure of the city is the Round Tower. Once used as a watchtower and a hiding place in pre-Norman times, it has a height of 30 metres or 99 feet. It once had a conical tower which extended it by a further 5 metres. It only has a foundation of 60 centimetres or 2 feet and is one of only a few in the world from this period that you can still climb to the top of. A wonderful view of the city awaits any of those who venture to the top, but warning, the tower does lean by 18 inches. So when you do go and come visit and climb to the top of the round tower, stand on the left. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, throw down your hair. She did, you know, <laughs> she's not allowed to keep pets anymore. See what I did? Rabbit, hair. Oh, come on. The Normans used grand buildings as symbols of strength and would often build cathedrals and grand stone castles at the opposite end of a town. The first structure that was built in this site here was a moat and bailey, and it was built by the Norman warlord 
Richard de Clare, otherwise known as Strongbow. Strongbow had been brought to Kilkenny by King Dermot MacMurra. He had been exiled by the Irish chieftains to France, and now he was back to claim what was rightfully his. Having won back to the lands, he realised that Strongbow <laughs> couldn't take a hint, so he decided to form a union and a bond, and he offered his daughter Aoife's hand in marriage. And in 1171, when Dermot died, Strongbow declared himself the King of Leinster. It was in 1189 that Strongbow's daughter Isabel married a gentleman called William Marshall. William is celebrated today as the greatest knight who ever lived and it was Isabel and William who built the first stone castle that we see here today. William had been knighted in 1166 and without land or fortune he fought in tournaments and became famous champion all over Europe, even knocking a young prince later to become King Richard the Lionhearted off his horse in a jousting battle. He went on and served under five different kings of England and became a Knights Templar on his deathbed and is buried in the Knights Templar Church in London. If you've seen the Da Vinci Code, you've seen the church. In 1391, the famous Fitzwalter family, otherwise known as the Butler family, moved into the castle. And they remained here right up until 1935. The Butler family were the chief butlers to the king and that came with certain entitlements. They were allowed to tax locally and also entitled to 15% of all the wine imported into Ireland, known as the presage of wine. The last remaining butler in 1967 sold the castle for just 50 pounds to a restoration committee in the city. And in 1969, they handed it over to the state who still remain in ownership to this day and it's open to the public to visit. Throughout the centuries, the castle has gone through lots of change, from a defensive castle to a French chateau style, and then a stately home. And it has been voted one of the most famous and beautiful castles in the world. With many famous sons and daughters, one famous daughter of the castle was Lady Margaret Butler. She was born here around 1454. She married a gentleman known as William Boleyn, and later their granddaughter, was Anne Boleyn, wife number two of Henry VIII. And she was also great-grandmother to Elizabeth I. Protection in a medieval city in medieval times was really important. In fact, William Marshall had built a form of a wall out of earth and wood. It wasn't until 1275 that the first wall was built around the three areas of Kilkenny. There were three areas in the city of Kilkenny. There was High Town, later known as English Town. We had Irish Town down at the cathedral where we come from. And across the river, an area known as Johnstown, known locally as the continent because of all the soldiers catching the train to go to war in World War II. The area we are now is the High Street, which was the main area. The high areas were the main areas. High Town, High Street and Highways. Highways were toll roads where you paid a tax to get through. In fact, it would make a barrier on those roads out of a weapon called a pike, which looked a little bit like a spear. And when you paid your toll, the barrier would be turned to let you go through, or later became known as a turn pike. Still used in many places around the world to this day. Some of those roads had no toll, and they were known as freeways. Now, the high street is where the markets would come together to sell goods like leather and food and fix things and repair things. And this was the hub of the city and this was the Market Cross area. And sometimes there was even some executions. This is the home of John Rode and Rose Archer, a famous local merchant. Built in 1594, they went on and had 12 children. <laughs> no Netflix. He was a famous merchant. They had a shop on the ground floor and they all lived overhead. But however, as the family grew, they needed to extend the home. So they built a second house and then a third house. Nearby, we have the famous brewery of Smithix from 1710 and also Grace's Castle, which is from 1210. And it is still used to this day as a courthouse. There is much to see in the city from merchants' homes to abbeys to castles, museums. In fact, the new Butler Gallery has moved into its new home of Evans Home just across the river from where we are now. 
Kilkenny is famous for its hospitality, its sights and history, and is renowned for its fabulous food with so many restaurants, pubs, hotels and cafes. But we also have a chilling tale about Kilkenny. This is the home of famous Kilkenny witch, Alice Kittler. Alice was born to wealthy Norman parents around the year 1280. It was said when Alice's father passed away, she took over the family business as a local moneylender. But this is not why Alice became famous. Alice was married four times and all four husbands died very mysteriously. In fact, she wanted to be married 16 times. For richer, for poor, for better. Oh, for God's sake. But she was married four times. When she married her first husband, William Moulet, they turned the home into a tavern where they would hire local beautiful women to entice all the local men in to spend their hard earned money. But it wasn't until her fourth husband died that the story starts to reveal. John the Poor, his children from a previous relationship, accused her of poisoning him. They went to the Earl of the Castle to make a complaint, but the Earl was related to Alice and he didn't do anything. So they decided to go to the opposite end of the town, to the cathedral, to a new bishop in town called Bishop Ledred. Now the bishop accused Alice not just of poison him, but also of heresy and witchcraft. Not just Alice, but also her son from her first relationship, William, and her maidservant, Petronella. A trial was held and all three were found guilty. But the night before the punishment was issued, Alice disappeared. Some say she went to France, some say Scotland, and others say she lived out of years in a castle not too far from Kilkenny, but the reality is nobody knows. Her son, a wealthy man, got off lightly, only having to serve the poor for a period of time. But poor Petronella was not so lucky. With no lands, with no money, with no powerful friends, on the 3rd of November 1324, she was the first person in Ireland and the United Kingdom to be burnt at the stake for witchcraft. Well, while most of you can't be here with us at the moment, it's not gonna be long before we're all gonna be able to travel again. And I can't wait to welcome you here to the city of Kilkenny, the medieval capital of Ireland. I hope you've enjoyed our journey today where we've shared some of the stories and shown you some of the amazing landmarks and historical buildings here in the city. And I hope you get to come on shenanigans. It's not the same without you being here with us in person where we can bring the stories to life. I have more stories to share about archers, about why Kilkenny people are called the cats, why we are known as the Marble City, and about beer. Yes, I said beer. Now I have your interest. So why don't we raise a toast on this St. Patrick's Festival weekend. May your roof never fall in and may friends of the road never fall out. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed our whistle stop tour of the medieval city of Kilkenny. It was my pleasure taking you around today and I hope someday we see you here in person. So it's bye for now from me, Nevin Cody and the Shenanigans Walks team. And all I'm left to say to you is happy St. Patrick's Day. Woohoo! And put on some green, enjoy the day and have a little celebration. For me, I'm gonna have a parade around my garden. Bye bye. For hundreds of years, the island of Ireland has celebrated St. Patrick's Day. And while this year things will be a little quieter on our streets, in our castles, along our coastlines, there is always one place where the celebrations will never cease. In here. It's a testament to the renowned Irish spirit. A spirit that has spread to every corner of the globe. So, however you mark the occasion, always remember that no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have a piece of Ireland in your heart, you are celebrating with us. Happy St. Patrick's Day.
Starting from St. Patrick's Day, audiences worldwide can enjoy a programme free online called Shodan, with performances by the Abbey Theatre, by Druid, by Martin Hayes, by Wee Banjo 3, by Sinead Gleeson, by Cush Game, by the Irish Baroque Orchestra, by Theatre Lovett, and Irish films with a particular focus on Cartoon Saloon. It's show day, Ian. Gachy and Kian doesn't show on a show. And they're all available absolutely free across the world on Culture Ireland's YouTube channel. Buenigi Sultosta. Enjoy them. <laughs>